want you to pay very keen attention to what I'm about to show you. This market is fractal. What do I mean by that? All the things that are happening on the bigger time frames, like the daily, weekly, and monthly time frames, also happen on the smaller time frames, like the one hour, 30 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, even on the one minute time frame. That is why we see that the market is fractal. Everything that is happening on the bigger time frames also happens on the smaller time frame. So it's the same pattern over and over and over, regardless of the time frame. So we are going to look at what I am about to show you on a larger scale. When I say a larger scale, I'm referring to the bigger time frames. Then we also look at it on the smaller time frame. So let's start from the monthly time frame. Now, uh, when you come over to the monthly time frame, from one vertical line to the other, like I was explaining last week, represents a whole year's price action. This was January, and we are currently in February. So, like I was saying, the market has got three phases. The first phase of the market is the accumulation phase. And that usually begins at the beginning of every period. When I say period, it could mean yearly, a yearly period, a monthly period, a weekly period, a daily period, or even a session, a session period. Now, if you want to know, or if you want to have a view of what happened within the whole year, the time frame you must come to, there are two time frames you can come to, the monthly time frame and the weekly time frame. From one, when you come to the monthly time frame, on one black vertical line, the other represents one year's price action. It's the same on the weekly time frame. On the weekly time frame too, from one vertical line to the other, represents one year's price action. So if you look at these lines, let me help you see it better by putting red horizontal lines over there. There's a red horizontal line I've just placed here. There's another one here. That was for the whole of the year 2020. We are currently in 2021. And this year, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks old. We're in the second month, which is the month of February. This year, 2021, is now forming. We're in the early stages of the year. So if you observe, this, most pairs have been very choppy. That is because we are in the accumulation phase of the market. So what happens in the accumulation phase? I want you all to pay attention to what's happening here, between here and somewhere here. Let me highlight it for you to see. Look at where I've highlighted. Let me zoom in so you can see more better. Now, look at what's happening within that box, the box I've highlighted. Something very special is happening. So the market is consolidating. That is very, very obvious. So let's ask ourselves, why do markets consolidate? Now, the general knowledge out there is when a market is consolidating is because the base currency and the good currency have equal strength or equal weakness. And so there's a serious struggle between boots and bears. That is not true. That is not what causes consolidation. Consolidation is caused by accumulation. When I say accumulation, what am I referring to? When the year begins, or when a period begins, regardless of whether it's a year, a month, a week, a day, or even a session, when a period begins, people are now, the period has just retail traders and institutional traders are like, the others are being accumulated. That is what is causing the consolidation. It's because of the accumulation of orders at that point in time. That is what causes the accumulation. And it happens mostly at the beginning of a period. So let me zoom out and then show you. From one, from this uh, red vertical line to this red vertical line over here, it's representing one year's price action. Like I said earlier, that's a weekly time frame. And on the weekly time frame, from one vertical line to the other, they are all pure separators. They are those here. I have I wanted this one to be more obvious. That is why I have placed those red horizontal lines. Let me take them off and add them again so you see exactly what. I'm talking about these black dotted vertical lines. From this vertical line, all the way to this vertical line, it's representing one year's price action. And that was for the year 2020. Now, in the beginning of the year 2020, look at what happened. Hmm? If we go to the monthly time frame, we know exactly it happened in uh, January or February. That is usually the accumulation phase of the market at the beginning of the year. 
So that is the first phase of the market, accumulation. So ideally, you are not supposed to be trading at the beginning of the year because markets are now accumulating. But sometimes because of financial pressure and all of that, people are forced to get in because they have to make money. But ideally, you are not supposed to be trading in the first month of the, of the year. The market becomes sweet from late February entering into March. That is when the market becomes sweet. So if you look for the month of January and early February, there was consolidation. That is the accumulation phase of the market. And that is because orders are now being what? Placed. Retail traders are placing their orders. The big guys, the institutional traders are also placing their orders. Hedge funds are doing it. Investment banks are doing it. Uh, even central banks are doing it. You get me. That is what causes the accumulation phase of the market. What is the next phase of the market after accumulation? It is a phase called manipulation. That is the next phase of the market. Manipulation. Now, how are we able to identify manipulation? Hmm? Now, if you look at this carefully, you realize that after the accumulation phase, the market came down like this. The market did this. After the accumulation phase, the market came down like this. You can see that after that, the market was very bullish. For the most part of the year 2020, this pair was very, very bullish. As a matter of fact, it's still bullish. So this was what happened. So the market came down. That is the accumulation phase of the market. Then the third phase is called, a, some call it expansion, some call it uh, distribution. I like to call it distribution. You can call it expansion or distribution. Now, how do we know is a manipulative, or how, do they, how does a manipulative phase of the market look like? Mostly, if the market, if the market's true intention is to go up, that is, if the market is a bullish market, if that is its true intention to go up, usually the market comes down to clear old lows. When I say old lows, what exactly am I referring to? I'm referring to yearly lows. That is a low for an entire year. I'm referring to monthly lows, weekly lows, daily lows, and even session lows. So look at the previous box. Let me highlight what I'm talking about. So you know exactly what I am saying. Look at the previous box. Look at the new highlights I am doing. That was for the year 2019. It's a weekly time frame. So one vertical line to the other represents one year. Now for the year 2019, this was the highest it went. Hmm? I'm drawing that horizontal line from this point. This point right here. That was the highest point in travel. I'm drawing this horizontal line from that point. What was the lowest it traveled? This is the lowest over here. So I'm extending the year 2019 into the year 2020. That was the lowest price over here. So the manipulation phase of the market, if the market is, if the market's true intention is to go up, the manipulative phase is structured such that the market usually comes down to trade below old lows. And after the old lows are cleared, the market now what? moves up, so as its true intention. Why does the market do that? It is because this low is showing us a very significant price. That was the lowest the market traded the previous year. That was the year 2019, okay? And it's a point of support according to retail metrics. When I say retail metrics, I'm referring to uh, concepts and theories that were brought about by retail traders. You get me. That's what I mean by retail metrics. So they know the algorithm knows that this low is going to be a point of support for most retail traders. Now, anybody that is buying over there as a point of support definitely has their stop loss resting below. So the market aims for such levels because most retail traders are buying over there and have their stop losses set below. So the market trades below to clear as many stop losses as possible it starts to move in the true direction. That's why we call it manipulation. So the people that bought over there are manipulated. This is very similar to the uh, Judas swing. It's very, very similar to it. So that is how the manipulation phase of the market is. I'll show you this and I'll also show you how it works on smaller time frames. Like I said earlier, the market is fractal. Whatever happens on the big time frames also happens on the small time frames. So this move down, okay? was just to come down to clear every low 
that was here in the clear the low and like i said this low acts as a support level and so many retail traders have their buy on it resting over there the market comes out take away their stop losses then it starts to move as it's intended so how are we able to spot these kind of moves so we can capitalize on them uh most of the time you usually see what we refer to as an institutional candle resting right below those loops. But in this example, there was no institutional candle. In the subsequent examples we look at, you will see institutional candles. So this manipulation phase that comes out to take out this old loop results in the formation of a type of market, a buy market model referred to as turtle to buy model. So whenever you hear turtle to buy model, it means that the market has traded down to clear an old low before moving up. So this is a typical example of a turtle to buy model. So you can see we had the accumulation phase where there was a lot of consolidation. Then the market came down to clear an old low, then formed a turtle to buy model and then went up. So the move up is the true intention of the market. That is why it is called the distribution phase. That is the true intention of the market. That is why it is called the distribution phase. Yeah, so let's look at another example on a big time frame. Maybe this time for a sell setup. Then we go down to the smaller time frames and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking of. This was everything that happened for the year 2020. Now, what was the highest the market traveled in the year 2020? This is it right here. Let's look at what happened. Let me highlight this for you to see. This is where 2020 began. Now, if you look at this, there's a weekly time frame so far. One, two, three, four, five weeks, there was consolidation. Let me zoom in so you see. That is the accumulative phase of the market. Accumulation. There was consolidation over there, as you guys can clearly see. Okay? That was consolidation. So after the consolidation, after the consolidation, in the, in the process of the consolidation, it formed a high. And that was for the month of, uh, let me see, February. Okay? And there was a false breakout to the downside. There's a false breakout to the downside. That was a false breakout to the downside. Then what happened? A move up, and that was the accumulation, the uh, manipulation feature of the market. A move up to clear February highs. As you can clearly see, the market traded above February highs, 2020 February highs. That is where I have the horizontal line. It traded above February highs, as you can clearly see. They traded right into what we call an institutional candle, right here. We call it institutional candle because according to research, that is where the institutions, those candlesticks are the institutions on which, are the candlesticks on which the institutions like to place their trades. That's why it's called an institutional candle. So we have the accumulation phase, we had a false breakout, then the manipulation phase took place. Traded up, they traded right into the institutional candle, which is right here. Then the true intention of the market came to play. And what am I talking of? I'm talking of this move downwards from here down to this level. That was the distribution phase of the market. So this is my favorite kind of setup where an old high is taken out and then the market trades into an institutional candle. Or an old low is taken out and the market trades into an institutional candle. I love such setups because they are high probability setups. So it's very obvious what happened here. Accumulation force breakouts, then the manipulation phase happened. Declared uh, February 2020 highs. They traded right into the institutional candle. And then what happened? For the whole of 2020, this pair was selling. And the selling started somewhere in March. That was when Corona first became a serious issue. It had spread out of China and was spreading into every other country. And the United States of America, unfortunately, happened to be one of the countries that were hardest hit, leading to over 40 million people losing their jobs. So this is the distribution phase. Hmm? Right here. That's the distribution phase of the market. That was the true intention of the market for the year 2020. So when the year begins, and then you see a particular pair going up, let's say, okay, the year has begun, it's January, February, the pair is going up. It's probably just going up to find what we call a peak formation high to sell. So that movement up is very likely to be the manipulation phase of the of that particular pair. 
Once it clears a significant old high and then trades into an institutional candle, expect that particular pair to show you its true intention in the distribution phase, like USCCHF did over here.